Christina with Redefine Creative and I am back with my third layout using my September for the Love of Homemade Kits uh, kit. And so this is a series I'm working on with Hannah, Megan, Felicia, and Sarah where we choose a common recipe as well as an inspiration piece and we create layouts for an entire month using that kit that we have created out of our stash. And today I have added a couple things that were not in my stash so I'll make sure to tell you uh, what those are because they were not in my original kit. And this little stencil that I'm using is one of them. And if you are familiar with Heidi Swap's products, you know that this is a very, 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 very old stencil. And I am using it today to create a template to do some stitching. So right now, all I did was put that stencil on some white cardstock and sketched around it. And then I'm going to go ahead and poke holes all the way around for my stitching. And I'm going to do that five different times because I want five of these Hawaiian flowers that are going to go across my layout. So basically I'm just piercing holes, putting them close to evenly apart, um, enough so that when I stitch the shape it's going to look like the flower, the tropical flower that I want it to look like. And there you see I have all five of them from the same template, all five in different colors. And then what I did is I went ahead and cut them out. And so I just cut around the edge and left a white border. And then I'm taking my Tim Holtz Distress inks and I'm inking the edges in a color that matches the embroidery thread that I used. And I'll show you an even, there you go, an even closer up look. It kind of makes it look 3D on the edge and finishes it off. And so now I have all five. And I have pulled out my watercolors and my cup of water and my straw. And I am channeling my inner Amy Tan, and I am using that straw technique that she has taught a few different times on her channel, um, where you basically just get your paper nice and wet. You take your straw, and once you have some of that really wet watercolor on the, on the paper, you use your straw to go ahead and blow through, and it creates these kind of streaky lines. And then I also went back to my stash, so not in my kit, and pulled out this piece of paper from the Crepe Paper Cute Girl collection because I wanted that border across the top that has all of those different colors. And so I'm going to kind of line my flowers up where they match onto that pattern paper strip. And that's going to create the major design element for this page. So the rest of the page is going to be pretty simple because this part is, is pretty bold. So this is a photo that I'm using and it's a picture of my daughter and she has, it's kind of hard to see in the, on the screen, but she has a Hawaiian flower clip in her hair. Um, this was taken when we were on vacation in Hawaii and it was her first time being there. And we were out on a whale watching trip. So this is kind of out in the ocean. There's some real dark blue um, ocean water in the background. And so I'm using that 6x6 six six paper pad from Amy Tangerine to pull out some layers that I can put behind my photo. Now I went with things that were pretty subtle. So I have a black and white dot. I have that real subtle yellow pattern that you see I just created a strip. And then I have my blue and white in the background. Because this page is so bright and vibrant, I did not want a whole ton of very bright and vibrant behind my photo. So I am going to add some little details and embellishments on top that will brighten things up. But I really wanted my layers and my matting to be pretty simple. And it's just going to pull in the colors from the top. And then I get, go ahead and decide to put a little black border. And if you notice in the background, I also put that little black border around that strip up at the top. And now I am taking some little pieces of fun foam. And I am just going to mount each one of these stitched flowers that I created on a piece of that fun foam. Because I want them to have a little bit extra dimension. And because it makes it a little easier for the stitches and the thread and things in the back to lay nicely and kind of play well with the rest of the layout, if I put some fun foam back there. So I'm just going to pop each one of those up on that foam. The other thing it does, and you'll see this in a little bit, is I'm going to color some letters to match what's going on with those flowers. And they're also going to be on a white foam. So it's going to kind of pull everything together having them popped up on that same look that my letters are going to have. And then I just kind of play with the placement of where I want those to go. And then down here on the bottom, I'm going to add some of these little puffy stickers that are also in the flowers. And they're just in colors that kind of match. And there's going to be just two on the top and two on the bottom. 
And then I also pull out a couple of strips of this washi. This is from the Amy Tan washi book. And she has one that has a floral pattern to it that kind of matched all the colors. And so I'm going to play with this for a second because I keep messing up and not being happy with where the placement is. Um, but I'm going to have a piece down there in that corner. And then I'm also going to have a piece. See, there I go. I'm tearing it apart, putting it back, tearing it apart, putting it back. Um, I also have a piece of that that I'm going to put up in the top left-hand corner just to kind of add a little bit more detail because this this layout is so heavy um, with the flowers in the middle and with my photo in the bottom. So it does add a little bit of weight to that top left uh, corner, and you'll see me adding that in here in a second. And there we go. All right, so now I have pulled out the two stamp sets that I have in this kit. And this one is from the Wild Story Stamp Kit from Allie Edwards, and it just says Wild and Free, and I'm going to stamp that on the bottom. And then on that same set, there's a little tiny stamp that I'm going to use up at the top that says the Wild Ride of Life. And I'm just going to ink my stamp once and then stamp it a couple of different times to kind of get a little variation of that color. But I do like the little pops of black that I've added just because this is such a bright layout. Those little touches of black really kind of help to make everything cohesive and, and work together. And so I know I want my title to be Aloha, Aloha, Aloha. And I have these white letters. And I also have these distress, distress crayons from Tim Holtz. And this is one of the easiest ways to make a really neat, different look. I have taken those and colored right on top of those foam letters and then I've taken a bunch of water and placed it over the top to kind of activate those distress crayons and then I take paper towel and blot it on top and it takes off part of the color so it has like a watercolor look to it and you can still see that it's on the white foam behind it so it really makes these letters look three-dimensional You'll see a close-up here in a few minutes at the end where you can really see that, that three-dimensional distressed look of these letters. And I absolutely love how it turned out. So there you see I'm just going to line up my title right against the edge of my photo. So I have the turquoise aloha and then the pink aloha. And then I'm also going to pull in the Amy Tan black uh, Cal Bertesky alphabet and add a third aloha down there in the bottom so that the whole title will read aloha, aloha, aloha. And there we go. We have that full title complete. And that's going to do it for this layout. I really hope you enjoyed this one and you feel inspired to go through your stash and create a kit and work with it along with us. Uh, please make sure to check out Felicia, Sarah, Megan, and Hannah's videos this week as well. And we'll be back next week with our last video with our September kit. Have a great day. Bye.